Hello everybody, what is going on? I am Joey. So today you join me here with Derek for the Spoken Wheel Show. Now, if you're new to the show, being this is our first episode, so you probably are new, <laughs> we're going to be covering the whole automotive world from a new perspective. So this week's episode, we're going to be covering everything from luxury cars to the current hot topics of the automotive world, cars that have just been released, and our new series, The Bidding Battle, and upcoming cars, and probably the part you'll most be looking forward to, Roast My Ride. There is a brand new Bentley Bentayga. I say brand new, but uh, it really isn't that new at all. You look at the, you know, the rear end and the bits of the car, you kind of see the influence of the, the Cullinan and, you know, other Bentley models. Yeah, and the Rolls-Royce Cullinan's rear end is uh, not a pretty one for sure, so I don't know what Bentley was thinking by copying that, but uh, I wouldn't go down that route if I were them. So one thing similar from the Continental is the taillights are nice and thinned off, which I actually don't mind. I think that's kind of referring back to Bentley's old style with the small taillights and... It actually looks quite good. And there's just a bunch of other small updates, like, you know, a new infotainment system and, you know, new buttons. But overall, it's just a facelift, but somehow Bentley just forgot to tell everyone about this car. <laughs> Don't even know why that happened, but go ask Bentley for that. Rolls-Royce has another new car called the Rolls-Royce Wraith. Don't get me wrong, cryptos. Yes, cryptos. No, not the cryptocurrency thing like Bitcoin. <laughs> um, I actually don't know what they're exactly referring to this car, and it's, don't get me wrong, it's not a new car. It is a Rolls-Royce Wraith, but a special edition of the Wraith. But it's in gray. Yes. With the blue blue look and interior and design. And in theory, you could spec that from your local Rolls-Royce dealership, <laughs> so it's not really a special edition model. But let's get to the most interesting part, which is the hidden codes yes. within the car. So I'm quoting Rolls-Royce here. They have hidden codes within this car that only the Rolls-Royce buyer could crack the codes. Now, you might say, okay, the average Rolls-Royce buyer, you know, you look in the 1920s, was this really rich, educated person. Sure, good thing. 2020, I don't think that's the case anymore, is Bank it? account numbers. Yes, <laughs> yes, all about those bank accounts. Well, uh, are you ready for what the uh, the codes are? Now, before we get to those, you might say, well, wh what are these codes exactly? Well, if you look around the spirit of Ecstasy, which is the Ecstasy, Ecstasy? The, the front emblem. <laughs> yes. Uh, the, the, hood the, lady, the lady, the <laughs> lady. Um, you'll see there's all these weird, like, divots and buttons and just, like, Lines. and the headliner has it, the seats have it. Well, you might say, okay, this is something we'll never figure out, right? Well, Rolls-Royce revealed today, or Rolls are filming today, on their Instagram and Facebook. Are you ready for this? Oh, dear. It is not that complicated. It's Morse code. What? So, in theory, anyone... What? Can, yeah. Morse code? It is Morse code. I can go down to the local radio station, and they would have Morse code. And that's my point. Why am I buying a Bentley for <laughs> how much this costs? For Morse code. Yeah, exactly. That looks like a broken constellation. <laughs> Just go with the Starlight Headliner, people. Exactly. Um, yeah, so Morse code, uh, I think pretty much anyone could figure out. You don't need to own a Rolls-Royce to know Morse code, so uh, a bit stupid a Rolls-Royce there. Yep. I think anyone could figure that out. <laughs> uh, by the way, I don't think Rolls-Royce have had any sales on this car, so Not good luck to them. Yep. <laughs> now, uh, the current Mercedes-Benz S-Class, and the Mercedes-Benz S-Class has always been the pinnacle of luxury cars. But... It now is sort of looking like a C-Class, but then of course you look at the entire lineup, they're all starting to look the same. Now these photos of these Mercedes S-Class, and I'm doing this with the weird finger quotes because uh, they're, they're <laughs> leaked photos, so we don't really know if this is exactly the S-Class, but we can't figure out anything else it would be. And my big issue with this car is it's very simplified, but there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone's kind of going for the simplified look. Not a bad thing if you do it right. But my issue is, if you look at the S-Class's history, it started out being all ultra-luxurious, wrap-around wood trim, the chrome lining around the wood a trim. A lot of expensive stuff went Leather, into those cars. I, an IWC clock, like just details you wouldn't even notice. Uh, but this new thing is all about being simple. And I have a theory on this, and hear me out on this one. If you look on the original Mercedes S-Class buyer, or S-Class buyer up to this point, uh, they are probably around age 70 to 90. So when they grew up, luxury cars like these Cadillacs, they were all about, you know, being ultra luxurious, premium materials, weird details. The biggest and the best that you could get. Well, I think Mercedes has assumed they've all died <laughs> um, because looking at the way this car is, I don't think they'd like it. So 
Either Mercedes is appealing to a new market... Or they're doing something really drastic, which means they're evolving. And this isn't the first time Mercedes has done something drastic and involved. Guess what? What? There's a new car company. Okay, what are they called? It's called the Stellantis. Ah, uh, Stellantis. Yes. So, for those of you who do not know about Stellantis, or as Motor Trend says, ask your doctor if Stellantis is right for you. Um, Sounds like a shark, too. Yeah, so it could be a shark, it could be a medicine, it could be an ancient Greek character. We don't know how they got this name, and it's none of those. So Stellantis is a merger between FCA, Fiat Chrysler, and PSA, Peugeot Citroen. Now this is a huge merger because, let's just look at these companies. So PSA is Peugeot, Citroen, DS, which is just a rebranded Citroen, uh, Opel, and Vauxhall. So a couple of old GM companies. And then they have FCA, which is basically Fiat, Lancia, Alfa Romeo, Maserati, Ferrari, plus Chrysler, Dodge, and Jeep. So you take a previous merger, combine it with a new merger, and rather than getting FCA, PSA, or Pacific Year, uh, you get Stellantis. Stellantis. So if you've been changing your tire and changing your oil and working on your car and have not seen the living daylight because you've been migrating in your garage for the past how many days, there's a new Ford Bronco. Really? Didn't yes, know about it. Yes, there is. So, Ford claims it can handle any terrain. Now, just so you know, every manufacturer says that. And it's been proven before, many manufacturers can build cars that cannot handle any terrain. So, we'll see if this really lives up to the test. We'll see how any terrain can work out. And uh, not only that, if you notice the front wheel, it has a very intriguing design. It has a you-know-what on it. Yeah, so to explain this, uh, if you look at a Ford Mustang, rather than putting a Ford logo, they put the Ford Mustang horse. Um, so for the Ford Bronco, they thought, eh, let's not design a new logo. Let's just take that logo, tilt it sideways, and then kind of mix it with the Ferrari prancing horse, uh, Ford versus Ferrari. It's little... prancing the wrong way, per se. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so Ford, I'm not sure they'll be keeping that logo after seeing this video. but uh... They'll be changing like the Cadillac with their Vs and crests. Yep. On the Bronco, there are two versions. There's the Bronco and the Bronco Sport. No, the Sport is not a sports version. It's just a mini Bronco. Uh, they could call it the Bronco Calf or something. The Calf. Uh, but the baby. The baby, yes. But I think the Bronco... I don't, know, I don't know why the Bronco Sport name exists. It's kind of stupid. Now, there are many different trims. Let me read these to you real quick. There's the base, the base model, the Big Bend, the Outer Banks, the Badlands, the First Edition, and then you have the big Bronco. Now, the Bronco and the Bronco Sport have slightly different trims, but most of them are the same. Uh, a lot of it's just visual details and how they get the name. Now, let me give you these trims real quick because some weird options. So, the base gets you a 1.5 liter three-cylinder engine with four-wheel drive. A bit small on some standards. Yes. Now, four-wheel drive you'd expect. It's an SUV. But for this beefy car to have a 1.5 liter three-cylinder engine? Mm, I mean, me, maybe at least a four or six-cylinder, if not an eight. Now, they're the Big Bend uh, is, it has aesthetic upgrades, a few basic options like navigation and, you know, the basics in cars. What cars should come with. Does it have power windows? Yes, it does. <laughs> Being a Ford, sometimes you gotta ask that question. You gotta ask that question sometimes. If, if they even work, yeah. um, of that, course. That's the question. And then you have, and according to Ford, now, the car has cloth seats, but if you upgrade to the Big Bend, they're easy to clean. What that means, we have no idea. Now, the Outer Banks, yes, I know these names are a bit weird. Uh, the Outer Banks gets you, is the luxury version, um, which gets you a leather interior, heated seats. Again, that's now a standard thing on cars. And some other things like dual pane windows. So, again, what I see luxurious people who drive G-Wagons in a Ford Bronco, Outer Banks... I don't think so, simply because it's a Ford and Ford's never really been in the luxury market and they should have done a Lincoln, except when they did the Lincoln pickup truck. Yeah. So Ford's last luxurious big car off-roader thing. Yeah. That was, yeah. That Awful. Was not, 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 we shall not mention that, please. We will have that yes. edited out of the show. We will. Then the Badlands is the off-road version. Now, they could have called it the Bronco Raptor, although apparently there's a Bronco Raptor maybe coming, but that's Ford, confusing you as always. 
so it's an off-road version, off-road suspension. It has a new four-wheel drive system with a twin clutch differential. That basically just means torque vectoring. What is torque vectoring? It means the power can individually be distributed per wheel. So pretty, well, it's not simple, but it's not as big of a deal as Ford pumps it up to be. And it has metal bash plates uh, or just skid plates, trail cruise control. So it'll keep you at five miles an hour or whatnot. And then it has a camera system so you can record your Bronco experience. Uh, one moment. If, if, if You can't see the list here, but, but if you look at the differences in the model lines, there's like four like actual like ideas and innovations in each each one of these models and then you see the badlands and there's like two sentences full of accessories and then you look at like the one before that the outer banks i mean god knows what name that came from um and there's like leather interior and heated seats like isn't that in every prius by now i mean I, I just got to tell you, if I'm buying a car and I see that mine only has leather interior and heated seats and power windows and power steering and anything else that's so simple, why should I buy it? You'd be a bit disappointed for 2020. A bit disappointed. <laughs> now, in case that was enough, there's another trim, the first edition. Now, when every manufacturer does a first edition, it usually just has a badge on the side and an extra $250 just to say, oh, I have the first 100 cars. No one cares. Uh, but this first edition is the Badlands trim with luxury options. So actually, it's kind of interesting combining the best of both sides. So I'd be curious to see how that is, because I think of all the Broncos, so far that's the most appealing. So it's the only car with all the options, with more of the options that aren't on any of the other models. So they just make you buy that one particular model. And they're all standard, so yep. it's not really saying you got all the options. So saddle up for the new Bronco Rodeo. Basically... It immerses their customers in a Bronco lifestyle. Yes, yeah, so Ford claims this is an off-road driving school, which sounds interesting, uh, teaching people how to, you know, take their cars off-road. And many manufacturers have done performance driving schools, you know, with sports cars. But this is actually quite an interesting concept. Now, Ford claims this car is a family. Uh, with They're creating clubs, selling merchandise. And They've having... got the whole shebang. Now... Continuing with our off-road trend, uh, there's a new car called the Ineos. 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 Pick one out of five. Uh, we'll just call it, now it's called the Ineos Grenader. Uh, Grenader, I think, yeah. properly. Uh, weird spelling. Now, it's a bit of a confusing car because, although it seems like it's an original thing based on their website, wait till you hear the details because it's, it's not really that original. Like you said, it's not original, Joey. And you look at the design, you can see the G-Wagon lurking out of the wheel wells, the front end. Then you see the Land Rover totally with the headlights and the front grille, the boxy design. You, you, you Just look at the top, for instance. And especially the roof shape. Exactly. The, the, the Range Rover is totally in that. But then the doors, you see the G-Wagon. So it's totally a combination and mash between the two with a new confusing name that no one can possibly understand. You might say, okay, it's a bit of a Mercedes-Benz then. Uh, and it's interesting you bring that up because they actually do sponsor Mercedes-Benz Formula One. Uh -huh. So the question is, are they sponsoring for publicity, which isn't a bad strategy, or is it just a kind of rebranded, hardcore version of the G-Wagon? We don't exactly know. Moving on to real Mercedes Benzes, there's a new Benz AMG GTR Black Series, which is basically a hardcore, beefed up, souped up, bigger engine looking thing that it's a beefed up version of a beefed up car which was based on a beefed, beefed up, car. up other car so, so it's a, a big beef beef we'll call it a meat lover sandwich now if you look at the mercedes amg gt they kind of introduced it to beat the porsche 911 which to be honest they kind of were successful yes it didn't sell as good as the 911 but if you shorter than that it's a little more unique than a 911 but it costs the same price but they did also copy many trends like porsche to get the true 911 buyer and that's not necessarily a good strategy. Let me explain. Of the current Porsche 911 lineup, I think there's a now 30 different models. <laughs> Let us list them, Joey. <laughs> no, I don't think we'll waste your time with that. The point is on this car, let me tell you how many models there is. So you have the standard Mercedes AMG GT, the Mercedes AMG GT S, the Mercedes AMG GT C, the Mercedes AMG GT R, the Mercedes AMG GT R. 
Pro, the Mercedes AMG GTR Black Series, which is just, I don't know. The point is, imagine you bought a Mercedes AMG GTR. Then all of a sudden the GTR Pro comes out in the Black Series. What Mercedes-Benz is doing here is they want you to keep buying cars. What for? We don't know. They just want to take over Porsche's idea of having millions and millions and millions of the same car, but yet no one buys them. I think it's just an upselling scheme. The price of all cars just got raised at the bidding paddle. Right now, there's a 1948 Cadillac Series 62 Sauchik convertible that just got sold at Indy for at 2020, just recently, and there was one of two built, which is really rare of a car, because nowadays there's all these, you know, only 400, only 200, but of course one of two built, and the other one is still in existence too. Now, you may have seen me laughing at the name Sautchik, Sautchik, Sautchik. Uh, the reason, well, it's not originally English, it's Russian, and Russian's a very hard language. Uh, and the reason that I was laughing is not because it's Russian, because they were a Russian cabinet maker. Yes. That's right, a Russian cabinet maker. Nothing to do with cars, cabinets. So that means, in theory, in the future, we could have the GMC Denali William Sonoma edition. Comes with the Whole Foods next to it as well. It's sort of just like how imagining Pininfarina designing an entire building, or even a pen, for instance, or furniture, or, or other things like that, other than cars. Oh, wait. They already think, do that. Yeah. I think so. I think so. Just recently is a 1936 Duesenberg Model J Tourister in the style of Derma. Very long name for a car. It's being sold at RM Auctions online, which is a new thing nowadays to be buying cars online. Um, we had, you know, of course, telephone bidding. Oh, okay. I think there's a sli bidding. slight issue. Slight issue. Oh, dear. People worry about internet security. So let's say you hacked to this auction. You could buy this car for a dollar, couldn't you? I guess you could, Joey. You could put it that way. I'll take note of that next time you show up in a Model J tour. I'd be curious who, uh, who, who wins the online auction. <laughs> but looking at the design of this car, one of the most interesting things is the dual pal phaeton, which were famous, you know, in the late 20s and 30s. And look at the wind middle windshield. It's the, called the second windshield, and it drops. It almost vanishes away basically in the center of the car and that's pretty cool and one of the most strangest i've ever seen for brake accessories on a car is basically it's like this brake adjusting mechanism which i've never seen before Allow on any of our cars explain. modern cars have abs this is from 1936 i don't think it has abs uh basically you might see this lever and it says dry rain snow and ice basically i think it just adjusts how much pressure you need to apply to the brake pedal so therefore it prevents the wheels from locking up. My bigger question, who would drive a 1936 Duesenberg in snow and ice? If you do buy this car, please let us know, because I think the Arctic road trip would be really fun to do with this. Moving on to some upcoming cars, we've got an Audi Q4 Sportsback. So you kind of look at the front end. You see the fake grill, just like every other Chevy Volt and i8, for instance, on the road, and you kind of pull a smug face and understand that you're driving a V8. The style on this car is ugly uh i that, think that's a bit of a compliment uh now what does it look like well bmw released a while back the x6 which everyone hates and then mercedes followed with their gle coupe the so coupe. audi thought oh let's join the party and th this is a concept so it's not in production but uh it's awful looking as if this car couldn't get worse the interior is very audi-ish boring yes it's techy and cool which is awesome but it's gray on gray on tan. But I do like the steering wheel. Look at it, it's a bit of an oblong shape. It, it kind of, though it does not match with anything else in the car because everything else is smooth, rounded, and then pointy edges, the steering wheel is very nice. Maserati. Now they're a car company you've probably heard of, and recently so. they haven't really made anything interesting at all. Now the MC20 is this new car. Um, I forget what it stands for, some long Italian thing, or Maserati Course, which means race. Maserati racing. It doesn't exactly translate but into English. Before we get onto that, take note of the headlights, please. Um, I'm sorry, I'm getting flashbacks of, like, you know, Porsches, you know, kind it's of like... It's not too original of a car. And I know mm. Maserati's part of FCA, so there's a lot of brand sharing, but this is... Uh, as if the Porsche headlights couldn't get worse. When you get to the rear end, it looks identical to a McLaren GT. Now, you might say it's a bit of a stretch, but keep in mind, this car is camouflaged, so you can't really see the body lines. But in this camouflage they use, it looks like a McLaren GT, and 
Yes, that's, I guess, a good thing, but it's supposed to be an original new car. And it's not really that new, is it? The really interesting part's the engine. Uh, it's very complicated. A 3-liter twin-turbo V6, making 621 horsepower, 538 pound-feet of torque. So that's pretty good, you might say. Yeah. But wait till you see how complicated this is. There are two spark plugs per cylinder. Now, as a person who understands how to disassemble an engine and put it back together... Not that I... Not that you do, but I do. Two spark plugs per cylinder is a very interesting concept. I've not heard of it before, but it seems like it works. I guess it does. So it, one is off-center in the combustion chamber, while the other one is centered, and it's in the pre has a pre-chamber. Sort of like those uh, 70s Hondas, which were fuel-efficient because they had a smaller glow plug that lighted the fuel first, and all this confusing economic stuff that they smothered cars with. So, for Maserati to make it sound like it's a cool selling point, they said it's similar to an F1 engine. Is it, though? We don't know. We don't know the current insides of a current V6 F1 engine, so it seems like a bit of a marketing scheme, being FCA has two Formula 1 teams at the moment. So, another car that's upcoming is a new BMW M4. And one thing with BMWs. It's got a huge, 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 great, big, huge grill. So big, so huge. I love it. I love it. It's great. It's great. I don't think anyone loves it. Um, as if BMW couldn't make the grills bigger. But they wait. just did. Oh, yes, they did. So aside from that, you've got a complex, you know, simple design. You see the BMW influence along the car, but... No. One thing, I'll stop you there. All right. You might say complex, simple design. What in the world does that mean? Well, if you look at it from far, it's actually a very simple design. There's not too much to it. The closer you look at it, the worse it gets. So there's, just keep distance. Yeah, social distance. Uh, there's all these weird, like, divots. The hood kind of dips, but it's not for cooling. All these, like, sub lines that aren't functional. There's this front splitter. But, it, of course, there's only a handful of photos we have. As actually, this is a leaked image. Actually, so, this is what the only photo we have. The only photo. So... We are going off of very small information. We don't know what the interior will look like. Hopefully, it's better than what they have now. And now, for our favorite portion of the show, Roast My Ride. I just cranked up the oven to 350. Well, like, broiling. Don't worry, I'll base it too. Mansory, Mansory, Mansory. We don't really know the company's name. We just call it Mansory. They are a Mason German Eric. car company. Well, not really a car company. They modify slash rune vehicles and they usually do your typical flashy cars lamborghinis bentleys they did a bugatti but they took a car that's not really necessarily one that anyone with money can buy a ford gt uh looking at this car i don't even know where to start i mean looking at the hood there's like these strange textures oh, one moment please please strange textures that's a very very intriguing word to design de describe a car um especially which it looks like it has almost a carbon fiber front end but then it has these golf ball looking holes on the front i and wonder I'm if that, that that might actually be purposefully like a golf ball to make it you know go through air quicker yeah, I don't think that's the truth. No, 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 that's not, that's not the truth. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, yeah, like we said, this car is way too overly complicated, and we don't even know if it's functional. I mean, the three exhausts, this, the diffuser's actually not bad. I'll give them that. Uh, the wing is blah, the roof, it, it's got too much. Too a many bit colors. exaggerated in every speck of a car. I, mean, I think we might need to invent a new word than exaggerated. So the front end of the car basically looks like another McLaren you know, Senna, but yeah, that's let me not a, a that's For those of you who have not seen a, a McLaren Senna, and here's been... what it looks like. The McLaren Senna is a functional car, but it's not a pretty one. But at least it has a reason for being ugly. Was it designed for blind people? No. Oh, dear. Now, the Mansory will very much look like a McLaren Senna from the side, except we don't know if it's actually functional. And being how much money and time for spent on the aerodynamics... Either Mansory ruined it or proved that Ford can't build a car. Which, both of those could be true. As if it couldn't get any worse. It's got, like, a Rolls-Royce interior. I swear to God. It, I'm, I'm not saying it's designed by Rolls-Royce. But the quality and the workmanship in this vital image we have that is presented on your screen at this very moment shows a lot of characteristics of a very expensive sedan model that you would pay 
hundreds of hundreds of thousands of dollars for in England, like H.J. Mulliner Park Ward. Yes. And the bigger question, if the Ford GT is supposed to be a hardcore track car, why does it have a luxurious interior? Someone explain this. Yep. And my biggest problem with this is the name. If you put L in front of something, it's the greatest car of all time, it must be, right? Le Coeur is the greatest, right? Well, Mansory decided to call this Le Mansory. So this is their the top-of-the-line highlight car. Might be the worst they've ever done, so I guess that's what we'll remember them for. So, yeah, successful. All right, everyone, so I hope you enjoy our new show. We'll be having episodes coming out either weekly, every other week, and once a month we're planning to do a live stream where you guys can ask us questions about cars and all that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content to come. As always, I'm Joey. And I'm Derek, and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.